As the lockdown begins in Lagos, Ogun, and Abuja, the Lagos state governor has urged its residents not to panic over restrictions. But there are some worrying developments. And the opposition party, the People's Democratic Party, has expressed its belief that the address by President Bukhari is devoid of new solutions. This is Plus Politics, and I am Felicity Ezewike. You're welcome. The Lagos State Governor Babajide Songulu has urged residents not to panic following President Muhammad Buhari's order restricting movement in the states. The state government had earlier announced that it would provide food for 200,000 households in a state that could not provide for themselves. But it seems there are more worries ahead. Scammers are already on the prowl, and citizens have more questions than answers. Joining us to discuss reactions as federal government ordered shutdown commences is political analyst Gochuku Ikako. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Uh, we'll be joined subsequently uh, via telephone. Um, a legal practitioner will be joining us. We'll introduce him when he does uh, come true. Uh, just as a preamble, how has the lockdown be been for you so far today? Well, um, it's been quiet. Uh, the whole city has been peaceful. Uh, coming down to this place was very, you know, was no very, traffic. No traffic for a change. Yeah, but uh, you could still see that some people are not taking the instruction very well. Uh, I, I could count more than four or five football fields. You have young people uh, in their numbers, especially men. You have 15, 20 of them playing football. Right? And this defeats the essence of social distancing. You still see some people on the road trying to go to one place or the other. Or because there's no cars on the road or no buses on the road, you see them walking a long distance. And uh, some people can faint, some people can um, die of exhaustion, like called the long journey. So I feel like uh, well, people need to take it more seriously. For those that are playing football, this is not the right time to be Leonardo, uh, Leonardo Messi or Cristiano Ronaldo. <laughs> Stay in your house and. And let's Indeed, pray. that's the message, stay in your house. But before we continue this conversation, let's take a look at some reactions from Abuja. Other countries that shut down, they settle their citizens. And they, the way they, they talk to their citizens, the way they will understand. And if our own cannot be different, our own cannot be exempted. I think they will know how our country is. The little one they can give us will understand with them. In some other places, let me just say in some other countries, the way they do it is that the governor also contributes something to the people. You understand? So that when they will be at home, it won't affect them much. But in this place, they just ask everybody to stay at home without doing anything. How are you going to take care of ourselves and our family? So it's kind of hard for us to do. Every day is my business. And if I didn't come out, I will not have anything. That is why. So this particular thing government are doing, I see it as a highest level of cheating to me. Because they will not allow me to do my hustle little, but they will not give me anything. I saw in this radio they announced uh, I think donated how many million. Uh, this one donated, donated, and nothing given to us. They hinder me not to go, and they didn't help me. I said, you see me now, I'm just stranded. You see some of the soldiers driving me. A, 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 that is an old man like me, driving me like a child. What the federal government are doing to my own side is normal. Because it is when somebody is alive, before you think what they can do tomorrow. But when the life is off, you cannot be able to know what you are going to do tomorrow. But what I am pleading to government, they should try to, since this is going to last two weeks, let them try to do something. A country like Nigeria, where there is so much uh, citizens who come out day by day to look for their daily bread, it's a, it's a very big issue that most of them are at home. Some may even be suffering not only from uh, coronavirus, but uh, <laughs> a hunger disaster, if I may put it that way. So the, fighting the coronavirus is OK. The presidential direct, directive is OK. And considering other nations of the world that everybody's on lockdown. But when you have a lockdown and people don't have what to eat, it, it may be heading for another problem, another crisis. If it's not being addressed on time, and there's no major palliative for the citizens. Other countries are shut down. Some reactions from Nigerians there. But they, they that is just a, a few of the concerns. 
uh, that's being shared. Let's take a look at the, the developments that are coming up. Uh, let's go to Ocean State, where the government has announced that a middle-aged man has been arrested for trying, allegedly not trying, for impersonating its officials, asking people to give their PVCs and their details in exchange for 10,000 Naira that the government was going to give to them. What are your thoughts about this development? Well, I, I, for me, I think it's, it's the, whoever the person is uh, defrauded people intentionally. And uh, to an extent, I think it's something that is, uh, that is, is uncalled for. Uh, I think um, lawyers might agree, and I think I agree with them, that it's a criminal offense, and the state should prosecute the person at the end of this whole uh, coronavirus crisis. But most importantly, it raises another important uh, issue that the government needs to address. Uh, there are a lot of information flying around this period. A lot of people are saying different things across WhatsApp group, across uh, social media platforms. So uh, it is high point that government intensify their effort in communication. The most important thing is that people wants to hear something, people need to hear something, people are itching to hear something important from because they need to hear something, they need to hear what is government saying, what is government trying to do for us at this point. So government should access uh, all, all forms of communication, be it traditional, be it digital at this point, to communicate to the people. If the people understand that the government did not ask this person to do this thing, it will be easier for them not to give out uh, the PVC or their personal details to the same person. So uh, for communities that are, not, that are not easy to reach out, they can use megaphones or wherever, but government must communicate at this point. So because uh, with the information, the people can have a sense of hope, understand what the government is trying to do, understand what NCDC is trying to do and how we're tackling this issue, and understand and say, okay, these are government palliative measures to help us uh, be fine and be okay within this period. But if government does not communicate their intent or what they're doing or what they're not doing or what should be done, uh, the people are going to listen to someone else and most likely they're going to listen to someone that is uh, flying fake news around WhatsApp, around different social media platforms. So it's a call to responsibility on the part of the government to do more. Okay, I, I wouldn't want us to dwell too much on it, but there was a masquerade who confronted the police officers um, um, on the issue of social distancing. There was apparently a festival, and we're going to see things like that happen. Add that to the IGP um, issuing a statement and warning um, that they have intelligence reports that suggest that there will be an increase in fraud and cyber crime during the coronavirus uh, lockdown. Um, I mean, we're already seeing it happen. Mm. What should people look out for? Your, your internet savvy enough to give um, well, advice? Uh, for me, uh, the masquerade on, uh, like uh, the cultural philosopher Bessere said, Igungu, be careful, you know, enter express, moto jama. So it's practically what happened. So at this point, uh, both spirit and human beings understand there is a government at this point. And if you go across, if you go against it, there are uh, punishment for anybody. So the masquerade and whoever, the people that are in charge of it, they, they will take care of them. But most importantly, on the issue of uh, uh, internet fraud, uh, uh, credit scam scam increasing at this point, that is true. What the IG, what the IG of police said is right. Uh, this, is a, this is a peak period for uh, credit card fraudsters uh, to send out phishing mails. Because a lot of people in their homes, uh, in their houses, in their office, smartphones, their tabs, their, their laptop, keep getting information from their banks, uh, from companies, from food companies, from different people. So there are a lot of emails going out at this point. So people, most importantly, for those that are uh, on social media, they need, to be, they, they need to be aware, they need to be very careful. The emails that are opening, the, 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 the links that are clicking online, uh, the, the campaigns, the ad campaigns around coronavirus that are clicking to circuit to understand what is happening, to understand the information. That is, that is the most important thing because oh, if you click on the wrong link, if you click on the wrong thing, most likely uh, the credit card uh, fraudsters that are all over the internet did not stop. The coronavirus did not stop them from the activity. So people need to understand that, not as much as you are home safe, you need to be safe about what you post on the internet, what you click on the internet. There are a lot of phishing mails going on uh, at this point, and it is sad. So uh, as if your company sent you something, if your bank sent you something, make sure that it is your bank. Make sure that the, the, uh, it is dot com or not something, not something uh, that is not as it's supposed to be. So if you understand this, you can protect yourself, protect your finances, protect your uh, uh, personal information because if you don't do that it gets into the hands of the wrong person and they will use it against you. All right I'm told we have the lawyer with us he's Benga Demola Ojo. Thank you very much for joining us. Oh thank you good evening. Good evening to you. Uh, let's start by asking how has the lockdown been for you today? Well it's been a near total lockdown in my environment. Uh, sometime in the morning, I went to pick newspapers, and uh, I was actually a bit scared. 
the road was uh, eerily silent and uh, there were no vehicles moving. It was so bad that, uh, well, so serious that uh, you have uh, children play football on the, on the main road. So it's been total, really. Okay, there, there's been uh, some uh, development. By the way, we have in the studio Ugo Chuku Ikako. He's also talking um, on this issue alongside uh, you, sir. Um, okay. There's been some concerns on social media. Uh, it has to do with uh, people suggestions that people may die of hunger before the virus uh, gets to them. I saw that so repeatedly. I had to bring it uh, for conversation here. Do you believe the measures that has been put in place so far from the federal to state levels um, will be enough to reach those who truly need it? Or do we need more drastic measures to ensure that no one goes hungry at this time? Oh, I think we actually need more drastic uh, measures. I must uh, commend the Lagos state government, the federal government, and probably some other state governments for the efforts that they have made to deal with the difficulties that are bound to come with um, this uh, lockdown. But we have to realize that the Nigerian situation is quite different from what we have in the Western world. There are no safety nets for people. We do not have social welfare backup. So we have a situation where many people had just a few days or a few hours to make provision for a lockdown of 14 days in the first instance. I suppose in the next two or three days, people's supplies will begin to run dry. Tensions will begin to build up and uh, people will begin to get restive. We have so many young men in many environments who probably rely on uh, what they earn in a day to sustain themselves. Now they are no longer able to do that. They are energetic, they are young, they are restive. They can begin to constitute nuisance in environments in the coming days. So I think the government really needs to do more um, you know, the, in the typical Nigerian way, the government has made provision. But the real concern is we do not even know that these things will get to the people for whom they are intended. Uh, just to, to so, interrupt you quickly, when you say more, in specific terms, what, what are you suggesting? What more are you looking for? Because they've told us, we've heard of people receiving test messages, relief materials of food items being delivered to some homes, at least in Lagos, we know that is happening. Um, uh, we also know that um, they're going around trying to enforce the stay at home. Markets are still open. Uh, some food markets are being opened at strategic positions. So when you say more, could you explain an idea what you mean? Well, I suppose part of what the government needs to do is to expand the, the scope of this distribution. Yes, I understand that uh, some uh, elderly people have been contracted, but it is not the only the elderly people that need this assistance. As a matter of fact, the elderly people might have people who will support them or will provide for them. But we have young families. We have young men with families who rely on what they earn every day to sustain their families. The government needs to get to these people as well. We need to survive, just like people have said. All right, I mean, um... we need to survive hunger. For us Definitely. to survive coronavirus. Indeed. There's always, uh, I mean, we will have to continue living afterwards. Um, let me yes. come to you, Gojuku. Uh, there's also talk about a need for waivers. Um, a specific area comes to mind because when you keep people at home, you also, it will be unfair to keep them in darkness. Um, one of the prominent voices on this matter is a representative at the House of Assembly, that's the House of Representatives, sorry, uh, that's uh, Shewu Koko. Um, he's asking that the federal government suspend payment of electricity and water bills for ordinary Nigerians for at least two months. Do you see this happening? Is it practicable right now? The, the, the truth is that do average Nigerians have access to uh, 
water as it should, as it should. All right. So water is uh, is one of the basic things of life. But here in Nigeria, is 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 a big commodity. People pay a lot to get to have access to, uh, let's say, clean water. You put the borehole and the rest of them. Uh, some communities in Lagos don't have access to clean water, and uh, uh, the water the water system in Lagos is doing, but it's not working at its full at its full capacity. So for for me, uh, the truth is that. What is happening in terms of this also erases the problem we have as a nation. As part of because uh, a lot of our key infrastructure that the people need to survive are not working, and at periods like this, it becomes a problem for the people and themselves because the people that you need to for that you need them to stay at home, they need access to water, they need access to constant electricity. A lot of people are working from home, and they need access to constant electricity for them to work, for them to be productive, and for them to do what they need to do. And sometimes you don't have access to light. So. There is a lot that is going on. So aside talking about the whole uh, coronavirus issue and how it affects people, government should do more. But as it for starts, now, for now that we have a lockdown, yeah. for the areas, it, we agree, it's impossible, as we know currently, yeah. to have light all across Nigeria yeah. 24 hours a day. But is it possible that for the times that we have electricity, that these bills for two months be suspended? Is it something that you think the government will welcome and apply at this time? Well, I, I, don't, I, don't think, I don't think it'd be possible. For me, I think it has to come from the, uh, uh, the corporations, the, the people involved, uh, 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 organizations that are human sensitive and understand what people are going through. Uh, as it stands, the government is not, is not in charge of power as, as they should be, because we understand the privatization of, uh, of power in Nigeria. Talk about uh, the, Keja, uh, the EEDC in the East, you have the Keja and the rest of them. So it's for these companies to understand that you have people that depend on this thing and, and the rest of them. And also, we've seen companies like, uh, most especially uh, in, the bank, in the financial sector, you see banks supporting, uh, giving money, building uh, new uh, emergency centers across, across the city. So it is also for the power generation and distribution company to understand that people need access to light, people need access to this thing, and to see what they can do on their own part. At this point, it's not about, it's not about a corporation making profit or driving uh, the citizens or the consumers driving them to death with uh, exorbitant uh, uh, increase in price and the rest of them. They need to do that. It is, it, is a, it is a common sense thing that you expect them to start doing by now, to start okay, say, how do we help people to make living, to make life safer and better for people at this point? Because government can't just wake up and say, okay, we are doing this thing because we have a free market. And if that happens, it also sends a wrong signal to, uh, to at the end of the day, when we're done with this crisis, to the international community people that government can wake up one day in the midst of a crisis to, uh, uh, make a mess of a market that they don't need to come in. So for me, I think it's more of the corporation showing interest, uh, being kind to Nigerians. I understand that we're in this together and we need to get out of this thing together. All right, so Barista uh, Binga, I, I'll come to you with this uh, particular one. Um, okay. We know some um, African countries, at least two, uh, I'm not sure if it is Kenya or um, Ghana now, that has officially written to landlords in that area to consider, as inconvenient as it would be, not to take rent from citizens for at least two months or the period that we're going to go through this uh, pandemic and get it eradicated. Do you think that will be possible here in Nigeria? If possible, how would we go about implementing, ensuring that, um, in spite of the inconvenience, that landlords will comply? Uh, well, let, let me say that uh, I saw those uh, uh, materials on, uh, on the social media, and uh, I actually don't believe that they're real, because I saw the same material for Kenya, for Ghana, and for Uganda. I think it is not practicable. Um, landlords are individuals. We have people who earn their living from what they collect as rents on their properties. And I do not, just like my colleague there said, it is not possible for government to stipulate without any impute to landlords to forfeit what they are entitled to as rent. We might want to ask, just how many of the things that people pay government for has government really forfeited? If the government has not shown example, for instance, by writing off the bills of people for electricity, by foregoing tax completely, and uh, by, you know, so many other things that government collects money for from the people. If the government has not shown example, 
by forbearing on all of those things. It will be difficult for you to tell landlords to forgo the rents on their properties. The government collects land use charge on, on, on landlords for their properties. The government did not give them money to build. So as I do not believe that it happened anywhere else, whether Kenya or Uganda or, 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 or Ghana in Africa, I do not think it is possible here in Nigeria. All right, so we're still looking at uh, palliatives that can be considered at this time. Uh, now that we are uh, in lockdown, uh, one of them, a suggestion as a solution is the only of Ifa. He has made a suggestion that coronavirus can be cured using African herbs. He has also <laughs> said that this whole pandemic was, they foresaw it and that he is happy uh, I'm just trying to paraphrase some of the information that we saw online, um, that he is happy to collaborate with other Trado medical um, doctors to find a way to mass produce this um, solution, according to him. Is this something that puts you on edge? Because it has been no clinical trials as we know them for... Um, vaccines of that nature. What's your concern about this? Is this a solution or a problem? Uh, well, I think um, um, there is no harm in trying them out as vaccines. What I will not um, advise is that an infected person will rely on these untested materials for, for treatment. So if they are presenting these things as, uh, as uh, a kind of uh, preventive um, uh, medicines, local medicines that, okay, if you take these things, we will not contact the virus. That does no harm to us because we know that even before now, our people have been taking so many of these local herbs and uh, some say they work for them. But if a person has tested possible, positive, I don't think it is advisable for us to leave the treatment of such people to these contested uh, local medicines and, and apps. Okay, uh, same question to you, Guchiko. Uh, I, think it's a, I think it's a careless statement, uh, with all due respect to the Oni and his office. Um, at, at this point, we, we need to hear from experts, and when I mean experts, I mean people that, that are deeply researched and people that have vast knowledge in the issue, in the areas of epistemology and the rest of them, uh, like Dr. Chikwe Iekwazu, uh, the, the head of NCDC, uh, the Commission of Health in Lagos State. Uh, I think uh, traditional uh, uh, religious uh, leaders, rest of them, both uh, be it, uh, in the Christian faith and the Muslim in the Islamic faith, they need to step back and they need, they need to do it as a matter of national security and as a matter of our, for, 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 for our own health security. They need to start, stop making unguarded statements, statements that, can, that cannot be tested, that cannot be proven, all right? Uh, across the world, uh, the, the, the countries that have been able to manage this so far, talk about China, made a little bit of progress so far, there was no mention of traditional medicine in all their conversation. Right. Uh, so at the end of the day, well, some would argue that that is not Africa. Um, well, Africans. I mean, we keep talking about Afrocentric uh, solutions, African solution to African COVID, problem. But... COVID, COVID is not an African problem. <laughs> okay. COVID is a worldwide problem. So COVID is 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 a, is a vaccine problem. This is not about Africa. This is not the time to uh, show our flag or show our our, our chest. Nah. This is a time for us to all sit back to understand what is happening. What is the world saying? What is NCDC saying down here in Nigeria? What is FDA saying at, over there in the United States? This is, for me, I think it's, it's time for us to see the synergy between all these uh, uh, agencies, health agencies, what they are doing to help us. I think it, the best thing for, for now is for government to caution uh, these leaders, speak to them in the way they, they can understand. Diplomatic, and make them understand that the best thing that they can do is to tell, them, to, to tell their subject, people that are under them, uh, to listen to what NCDC is saying, to what the commissioners of health are saying, what the permanent secretaries of health are saying, because they are the ones that understand this issue. They don't understand it is not their jurisdiction. All right. Thank you very much, Guchiku, for your thoughts on the thank program you for, so thank far. Thank you so much. And Benga, thank you as well for your thoughts so far. Thank you so much for having us. All right. We'll take a short break. And when we return, the opposition party speaks again. We'll be right back. <laughs> 